Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano and welcome to City of Churches. Today, today we have a very special episode for you told from a somewhat unique and different perspective. Now it's the story of a small country church called Our Lady of Fatima and it's located in Manahaven, Long Island, New York and it's the story of a small church with a very big heart which first opened in 1947. Today we're going to hear from the people of this parish as well as the clergy. It's a fascinating story about the struggle of this church, how it was to build it, how the local ladies guild saved the day and how the mission to serve the local community continues to this day. So right now, City of Churches presents a film by Roy Schneider. Please enjoy Our Lady of Fatima Church. Lady of Fatima is a church that makes you feel comfortable. It is a wonderful, spirit-filled parish. Just like our mission statement says, we are warm, welcoming, and everybody is welcome in our parish. Uh, Lady of Fatima is a central home to everyone, and the doors are open to anyone. People are caring. People really do take interest in each other. Our Lady of Fatima is special. And in that sense of being special, I mean the sense of welcome and inclusion that we have in our community is probably something that you would not find in, in many other faith communities. It's a small, caring, and easy to get to know people parish. Everyone is very friendly and warm to each other, very welcoming. The Lady of Phantom is welcoming of all God's people uh, without distinctions. I know the sign outside says all are welcome um, and I really truly do believe that there's a place for everyone in the, in the parish. Everyone is welcome here. It's almost like you feel like you're home. To me, Our Lady of Fatima is home. Every time I walk through that door, I feel like I'm home. It's a, a spiritual home right around the corner from my real home. This parish was built by the people of Manor Haven. Men used to come after work because a lot of the work was done from volunteers. And uh, I can remember Carl Salerno was an electrician and I can vividly remember him on a ladder, you know, uh, doing his work like at five o'clock in the afternoon after he did his own. A number of very brave people took the step to erect this church so that they could worship as a community here in Manor Haven. And I think that says something um, about the community and it continues to say something about the community. I was three years old when my family decided it would be a good place to summer. 
So we would come out here and we would rent what we would call a bungalow in Manor Haven. When we were children, there was nothing down this part of Manor Haven. Manor Haven was much, much smaller. It was more country. There was lots of uh, wildflowers and berries. Now there are houses. I'd get up in the morning, I had no shoes on, a bathing suit and a towel, and walk to the beach and spend my day at the beach. The first memories of the church, a young teenager riding a bicycle in Manor Haven during the summertime. We would summer here. I'm from Brooklyn. We would summer here and we, I saw the church being built. First memory I have of this parish was uh, sitting on the foundation with two other friends. You know how kids are. During the time it was being built, mass was held at the corner of uh, Manor Haven uh, Boulevard and uh, Sands Point Road. So they had a mission church. They called it the Mission Church on Manor Haven Boulevard in the store right there where Evergreen is right now. I remember taking the folding chairs and we set them up around the altar. Dirt floor, um, big wooden table and little slat chairs, uh, benches. And the priest would open the door on a Sunday and mass would be held right there. And uh, it was full on Sunday, you know. To think that you could have a mass somewhere other than a church, but that's how important it was at that time to those people. There were women in the, in the village who decided that they wanted their own church nearby rather than having to walk up to St. Peter's. The Ladies Guild, I remember them when I was a kid. They were so much fun and they were always happy, happy people. And they decided they want their own church. And they decided to mortgage their houses. A few of them did that. And not alone did they do that, they had raffles. It had been started by a group of 12 women who not only did fundraising to establish the parish, but they, they really did the hard work of establishing our parish. I don't know of any other parish that was started by 12 women. When we moved here in 64, uh, Fatima was a very, very active social parish. The events that took place, the flea markets and the festivals and the things that we did for one another as well as outside the, the Fatima community as well. There were a lot of memories. The uh, bazaars, Father Pavone and his love of the opera. We had an Irish night at the Landmark. We, Our Lady of Fatima, this lovely little parish, sold out the Landmark. There wasn't a seat available. Helen, Father Toomey, and I stood up in the balcony, and the three of us were so proud of what had been accomplished, all by this church. No professional help, all by this church. For me, Fatima has always been a place of community that people gather not only to worship, but the activity of, of Fatima. Some of my earliest memories is when I was an altar boy. And um, back then, Mr. Shea would take us to the Mets game. And um, that was a treat. Because back then, no one had any money, and everyone was equal. And just to be able to go to the ball game was a huge treat. My kids grew up here. Um, they've got really good memories of the parish. Um, I think probably because there was a CYO baseball team that they all were involved in. My first memories of Fatima is when I came in 1981. I was still in a semi-habit and the carnival was going on across the street and that was my introduction into Fatima. The realization that it was a very accepting community and the carnivals that we had were, uh, they were great community builders and that was my first introduction to Fatima. During the summer, we used to have festivals that took place in the parking lot. And there would, the festival would consist of games, booths, which were manned by the parish 
a, a food court. It was fun. It was a party all the time. They had lots of parties when that center first opened. Uh, we had a party for St. Patrick's. We had a party for Columbus Day. We had a Valentine party. It was very social because you realize the Port Washington I grew up in is not the Port Washington of today. We used to have the Halloween parties consistently and everyone dressed up and, and went out to the nines. And um, just, these are the little things. Of course, we had the fairs, we had this, we had that. But uh, I think Fatima has a little bit to offer everyone and has touched everyone's lives in a different way. Jane, who was, who was my wife, um, was a person that participated in ministry. And uh, we got to know each other from seeing each other at Mass, and we began a discussion about how we could work together in ministries that are currently, that were currently not in, the, in place in the parish. So we started to talk, and sometimes we would take a walk after church, or I remember we used to get St. Joseph's bread here at Our Lady of Fatima. Uh, around Easter time, I think that is, and we shared a loaf of St. Joseph's bread, and then that's how kind of we met initially. Because of that, we, we certainly drew closer to one another, and that resulted in, in us really um, eventually making that commitment to one another in marriage. I mean, it was, it was a big part of who we are in terms of how we serve the community and how we serve one another. Uh, I had a party at my house and Art came and we started to talk and really we realized we had more in common than we thought. We met on our own, but I think there was prayers behind it to get us to meet. Well, the biggest family moment has to be uh, when Helen and I were married here, standing right here, uh, 50, I think five years ago. We were married here, I suppose that's one of the biggest things in our life. and. Um, we raised our children here. Celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary here, renewing our vows, that was the highlight, to have the sacrament here. All of Beth's sacraments um, were administered here. She participated in her baptism, her first communion, first reconciliation, um, her confirmation, and most recently, her marriage. I've made all of my sacraments here. I've been in the parish for about 30 years. Um, Recent, most recently was the sacrament of uh, matrimony. My husband and I got married here, so that's a pretty big memory. First time I came here with my family, we actually were uh, asked to bring up the gifts, and that was on Easter Sunday, so it was, very, it was a very nice time. I remember it well when we, when we first came here. Perry Como lived up in Sands Point, <clears throat> and he was a parishioner here at Alvadia Family. And he would sit in the back up on the choir during, uh, during Mass. Harry Cromwell's wife would come in for a visit and she would see the ladies doing the altar and she would take off all her fur coat and her jewels and she'd get right there with them cleaning and helping to make the, the altar beautiful. I came here one Sunday and I was going through a transition in my life and when I'd come to Mass here it was a very healing experience. And I remember one day I wasn't feeling very well and one of the um, ushers helped me um, out of the church and brought me home, which I, he'd never met me before and he just was, wanted to take care of me. And I thought, wow, this is a really special place um, because they take care of, of their parishioners. When I had my son in the towers going down, I knew where I could go. I came right here to the tabernacle and I just, this was the place I had to come to. And I know just sitting here and just t asking Jesus to save him that day, it really, this is where I come. Our Lady of Fatima is community. Uh, a faith community, uh, a community of people who care, uh, a community of people who care for the wider community. It's the center 
of the community. It's like you need some problem, you come to the church, and in some way, they get the answer that they need. Our parish is, is recognized in the community as um, the hands and the feet and the arms of Jesus in the community of Port Washington. The joy and welcoming of Our Lady of Fatima and the small community that is a real asset because we get to know each other and we get to care about each other and take care of each other and help each other grow spiritually. People see Our Lady of Fatima as what true Christians or Catholics should be. We have an outreach program that touches so many different people. Our Lady of Fatima was the place that made me feel home and, and welcome into the area and into the community. All are welcome here. That's our part of our mission statement and we are so involved with others in our community with the outreach program and just being there for others who need a source of faith and guidance. We reach out to so many people and it's not just in Manor Haven, it's throughout Port Washington. Our Lady of Fatima is I believe an integral um, part of the Manor Haven community, uh, not only just where it's situated in Manor Haven, but it's, uh, it's the programs that we have within the parish. Our, our social ministry program serves a number of people um, in Manor Haven and in the, the Port Washington community, not only just in Manor Haven. Well, in Manor Haven, it's like a home base. It has always been a place of, to congregate, to share, to help one another. This is a community of people who are dedicated to, to reaching out to those, those people in need as well. The uh, food pantry um, and what they, what they give out to the, to the local community is very important. People do uh, come to the church for various needs and you know, that's very important to them because they get a little help and make it through whatever tough time they're going to, whether it's financial or food, you know, we can provide you know, for you know, their temporary needs. When there was a fire uptown, Sister Kathy uh, sprang right into action and she helped the people who were displaced. She helped them get apartments, she helped feed them. Um, we took up a food drive, I think, for them. It provides a safe haven for those who need to come to a place for support. I think Fatima means help and assistance. I, everybody seems to know that they can come to Fatima no matter what they need. There's always somebody here to greet you and comfort you. It's beautiful. We try to get be a good community and helping each other. When Bishop Murphy first told me I was going to come to uh, Fatima, I remember I drove here. I just kind of looked around uh, at the church, a little bit at the rectory, and I did see in it, or felt in it, uh, that, that presence, the, uh, the presence of the living God. It's something special that I find in this church. Maybe because it's small, maybe because you feel close to God and to everybody. The community is beautiful. When I come to Mass Sundays and I look around the parish and I see everybody coming here, I realize that it's a very special occasion for everybody. When I speak with other people that um, happen to visit this parish, they say, uh, wow, that's, that's a really beautiful little church and what a wonderful community. It's a symbol of faith, of hope, and I hope of charity. It was a tiny little place on the street that called out to me and the children that I had had at that point. It was a welcoming home. It's just, it belongs here and uh, we need it. It's a, it's a necessity as, you know, food and water and, and a place to live. It's always been uh, a place I call home. Like, I was away for 15 years, out of, even out of the country, and, and yet this was 
the place of, this was my spiritual home. All things considered, uh, it's just been a really good place um, to be for the last 45 years. I, I just love this parish, and as they say, all are welcome. And I think that's really what makes our parish what it is. I feel very welcome at Lady of Fatima, and um, it's very diverse. It's a spiritual home. What's wonderful about Our Lady of Fatima, it's, it's small and it's intimate. And you're not a number, you're not a parishioner that's in the pews and you're anonymous. It's very easy to get involved in Our Lady of Fatima. It's just a very welcoming and homey environment that I don't see or really get anywhere else. It's where your heart is, there is your treasure. So Fatima's a treasure. Our Lady of Fatima is home. We're family here. We truly are family, so it's home. It's always been uh, described as a lovely little church that's filled with love. And I think the people in Manahaven feel that way about it. The Lady of Fanny is a very for me. Well, that's it for this episode of City of Churches. I sure hope you enjoyed it, because I sure did. And we'd like to give a special thanks to Roy Schneider and his wife, and to all the parishioners, the clergy, and everyone that was involved in making this production of Our Lady of Fatima Church, and especially to the pastor of Our Lady of Fatima Church, Father Stephen J. Peterson. If you have any questions about this episode or any of our episodes, remember, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter or netnewyork.tv. Or you know what? You can write into us at City of Churches, 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I'm Anthony Mangano, and God bless you. <laughs>